Welcome back to Dark Corners Streaming. Last night I dreamt I went to Manderley again. There's an unwritten rule that you don't mess with the classics. You don't remake the films of Kubrick, Billy Wilder, Michael Powell, and you don't go near Hitchcock. But Rebecca is not a remake. It is another version of Daphne du Maurier's novel and one with a very different feel and focus. All part of the plan. While Hitchcock's film is a gothic mystery, this new version, directed by Ben Wheatley and out now on Netflix, is more of a love story. Come with me. What? To Mandalay. Albeit one taking place in the shadow of a potentially devastating secret. That said, I don't want this to be a comparison between Rebecca's. I'm just reviewing the film in front of me. I don't believe in ghosts. At first, this seems like a thoroughly atypical film for the director of Sightseers and a field in England, particularly the idyllic early scenes, bathed in gold. But when newly married Mr and Mrs De Winter return to his country home of Manderley, the story quickly becomes suffused with a tension and unease that is squarely in Wheatley's wheelhouse and is as well handled as you would expect. Here, the colour has drained from the film, stranding Lily James' Mrs De Winter in the cold emptiness of the house, constantly reminded of her predecessor, the late Rebecca De Winter, whose name is everywhere she looks, and whose presence is represented physically by housekeeper Mrs Danvers. I keep it just the way it was. A stellar performance from Kristin Scott Thomas in what is the most memorable role. Welcome to Manderley. The film looks great. It builds the tension and the threat very effectively. It's your word against Rebecca's. And no other story does the ghosts of past relationships better than Du Maurier's, taking something that we're all probably familiar with to some degree and making it into a source of menace. She's still here. The cast is great, although, and I know I said I wouldn't do this, I did feel that Army Hammer lacked the bruised intensity of Laurence Olivier. Yeah. God, I don't want to hear another word about Danvers! The film does occasionally succumb to the indulgences of period drama, but that's what it is. And I do hope that it finds that audience on Netflix, because it's not what you might expect from Wheatley, and people might be afraid that he's gone in and torn up the genre. And he hasn't. It's less stately than, say, Merchant Ivory and with more handheld camera, but I'd still call it quite a classical piece of filmmaking and it's great to see such an idiosyncratic director adding another string to his bow. She... she gone into the sea, ain't she? I don't think it's faultless. It never quite swept me up the way that a great film can and the momentum did stall for me but it's still an enjoyable and a very well-made film. Thanks for watching. I've tried to avoid Hitchcock comparisons, but do you have any thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And as long as we're talking about books, I've got a new one out. There's a link in the description below.